Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to look at the product to sum formulas and the sum to product formulas. So these are a lot. I just want to warn you. They're, and they're very, very similar. So just be careful, especially when you're looking at the plus and minus and uh, which function we're using. So for the first example, we're going to rewrite the product of sine of 5x times cosine of 3x using um, and make it a sum or difference. So looking at this one, we have I'm just going to circle this we have here. So again, our u is 5x and our b would be 3x. So we'll have 1 half times the sine of u plus v. So that'll be 8x plus the sine of u minus v, which is 2x. And I'm just going to distribute the 1 half here. So we just have 1 half sine of 8x plus one half sine of two x. And that's what we could, that's all we could do. I mean, we could do more if we wanted to using those double angles, but it just asks us to rewrite it as a sum or difference. For the next example, we're going to look at the sum to product formulas. So this is really important, especially when we're combining terms that so we talked about this before here. So if we have sine of 195 plus the sine of 105, we could put those together, but we're going to have to change that sum into a product. So we're going to have to change it to 2 times the sine of really the average of u and b, and then times the cosine of the difference divided by 2 of those two angles. So this will equal 2 times sine. I'll write it out 195 plus 105 over 2 times the cosine of 195 minus 105 divided by 2. So the two, this is, let's leave that in front for a second, but we have the sine of 150 times the cosine of 45. And you can use your unit circle, but you probably know these really quickly, so that's just going to be 1 half, positive because it's in the second quadrant, and then root 2 over 2. So that'll just equal root 2 over 2. Find that exact value. Now let's practice with radians. All right, so you can actually pause this video and then come back to check your answer. All right, now, let's, now that you're back, <laughs> let's rewrite this. So again, this is a sum, so we'll have 2 times cosine of pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12 divided by 2. And then we're going to multiply that with cosine of the difference, so pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 12 divided by 2. All right, so we could simplify this. So that would be 6 pi over 12 pi over 2 pi over 4. And then over here we have negative or pi over 12, which is negative pi over 3. So that's going to be negative pi over 6. And we can simplify those. We know those angles from the unit circle. Those are easy, right? So pi over 4, root 2 over 2, cosine of negative pi over 6. That's still going to be a positive because in the fourth quadrant, root, two, root 3 over 2. So we'll get root 6 over 2. All right, let's do a couple more practice problems, and we're actually going to solve here using the sum um, to product formulas. So whenever we have something like this, we can't just set this equal to each other, right? They're, they're unlike terms, right? So we can't really do anything from here. We can't factor, so we're kind of stuck. So this is where we're really going to use those sum to product formulas. So here we have this difference, so I'm just going to rewrite this as 2 times cosine and that's going to be 4x plus 2x, which is 6x divided by 2, so 3x. And then sine of 4x minus 2x, which is 2x divided by 2, which is just x. All right, and then now we have these factors. So we can set these equal to 0 and solve it just like we've been doing. So I'll just say 3x, well, cosine's 0 at uh, pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, 
and I'll write the second one over here. So 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And we could divide by 3, so that's really just going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi over n. Divide by 3, and then pi over 6 plus 2 pi n over 3. All right, so we have those two solutions here. And then for sine of x, we're also going to have two solutions, right? Because sine of x is going to be equal to 0 at 0 and at pi. And remember, it's going to keep repeating. So it's really plus 2 pi n. So it's really, you're just adding pi every time. So we can actually just write that as pi n. So we essentially can have three ways of writing and covering all of those solutions. All right, go ahead and pause this video and try the last one. Here, so solve cosine of 6x minus cosine of 3x. All right, so here again, we have this difference. We're changing this difference into a product. So this will equal negative 2 times sine of 6x plus 3x, 9x over 2 times sine of 6x minus 3x, which is 3x over 2. So we'll make that equal to 0 here. And then we're going to set each factor equal to 0. So sine of 9x over 2 equals 0. Sine of 3x over 2 equals 0. We're going to solve each of these separately. So 9x over 2 will equal, that angle equals 0 at 0 plus 2 pi n. And we can divide or multiply that by 2 over 9, so we'll get 4 pi n over 9. The second solution, 9x over 2, well that will be pi plus 2 pi n. And then we can multiply both sides by 2 over 9, so 2 pi over 9 plus 4 pi n over 9 for that first half. Now let's look at the second part of this equation. So 3x over 2, we're going to set that equal to 0 plus 2 pi n. Now we can multiply by 2 thirds, so x is going to equal 4 pi n over 3. The second solution, 3x over 2, well that will equal pi plus 2 pi n. Again, multiplying by 2 over 3, so 2 pi over 3 plus 4 pi n over 3. So we have these four solutions, and we start to see some similarities in the values. So considering these values, the lowest is 2 pi over 9. Well, 2 pi over 9, that's going to be one of the, fir the first solution in quadrant 1. But we'll also start with 0. Right? That was also a solution up at the top. And then when we look at the next solution, 4 pi n over 9, well, 4 pi over 9, um, we're going to have to just add 2 pi over 9 to get to 4 pi over 9. So let's see if we add pi, 2 pi over 9 to that, we'll get 6 pi over 9, which equals 2 pi over 3. And that's our third solution here. So you can start to see that we can keep adding 2 pi over 9 every time and get the next solution. So I can actually condense these four solutions into one and say the solution set is 2 pi n over 9. Instead of writing each of these separately, which you can also do, but we can also notice that there's a pattern here and 2 pi n over 9 captures all the solutions. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you all in class.